the next lesson we're going to be going over from class was parallax. Parallax is when things are closer to this, the camera, they're going to move faster than things in the background. They're going to move slower, and what's in the middle ground is going to move a little bit slower than what's in front of it, but faster than what's behind it. Uh, another thing is the distance changes between objects when you uh, shift the perspective. It gives a new look to the animation. So I'm going to go File, New Composition. I'll call this Parallax. 1920 by 1080, 24 frames, 7 seconds. Okay, so I'm going to turn off title save. And I'm just going to make three shapes to show you this. So it's going to go layer, new shape. Then I'm going to add a circle, add a fill. And I'm going to switch to my black arrow tool, scale this up. I'm going to make this red. I'm just going to push it off to the side. I'm going to make sure everything's deselected. Command Shift A, because if I add another shape inside this shape, like we did last week, I run the risk of intersecting or subtracting the two shapes. So nothing selected. Layer new solid. Nope. New shape layer. And I'm going to add a poly star. And I'm going to add a fill. And I'm going to change this to green. Go to my black arrow. Scale this up. I start dragging, then I hold down the shift key. Now, polystar, I want a triangle. So I'm going to twirl down the contents by polystar, change this to three. Now I have a triangle. And then last but not least, so I'm just going to twirl these up, give myself some space to work. Nothing is selected. Layer new, shape layer, add rectangle, add fill, and we'll make this blue. So I have three different colors, three different shapes. I'm going to switch to my black arrow tool. And I'm going to scale that up. Now, I've seen a lot of people in class accidentally have the hand tool selected for moving around the screen. That's fine. But you can't change any of your layers or do any twirling down of the arrows with the hand tool selected. You must be on the black arrow tool. Always remember that. OK, so this is two-dimensional. These are all flat objects occupying the composition. So now we're going to switch to 2.5 dimensions, two and a half dimensions. We're going to go layer, new, camera. And as I covered in class, camera settings, I'm going to want 35 millimeter for this. Um, you could always do your own choice. I just don't want the camera to be too far away. This is the distance of the lens to the object. This area right here is what's going to be in focus. Make sure you have depth of field enabled. I'm going to change my f-stop to 1.8. That'll give me a nice shallow depth of field. I'll keep the blur level at 100. And then click OK. It's just saying, hey, you're going into three dimensions. That's fine. Click OK. There's my new camera. Now, these three shape layers are still two dimensions. I want to make them 3D enabled. This is your 3D enabled column in your switches right here with the cube. So I'm going to click in there. Sorry about that. Now you can see all three layers are 3D enabled. Now for parallax, we're going to want to push these in the Z depth space. That's near and far to the camera. It always goes X, Y, Z. Those are your three axes. X is side to side. See the blue going moving from side to side. Y is up and down. And then Z is closer or further from the camera. So I'm going to hit undo there. All right, so I'm going to overlap these all a little bit for this demonstration. Now, I'm holding down the shift key to constrain it along an axis. Or you could wait until your selector, see the X next to the cursor? That means I'm grabbing the X axis. And it'll move just side to side. Or if I grab the... Z, see now the Z is selected, I'll move back or forth to the camera, and the Y axis. And like I said, you can always move things by scrolling along the numbers if you want, like that. Okay, so now these are overlapping. Now I'm going to move them in Z space. I'm going to do minus 800 for the blue, push a little closer. This one I'm going to do minus 200, so it's a little bit closer to here and further from that one. 
And this one's going to go 500. I'm going to send that one backwards. Now they are all overlapping. The camera tool up at the top is what you use to change your camera when it's in the scene. But what I do, and I encourage everyone, is to use the letter C on your keyboard. I'm going to press C one time. Now I'm at the camera tool. The camera tool has four pull downs right here. Orbit, Unified, Track XY, Track Z. I'm going to explain them all by pressing the C key. With the first one, the camera shaped icon that looks like an old fashioned movie camera right there you can move the camera around three-dimensionally. See, now you can see how they are all farther apart. I'm going to hit the C key one more time. This is for rotating the camera. I'm going to keep it about there. I'm going to hit C one more time. Now this, you see the four directional arrows. That means I can pan from side to side. It's going to be just straight side to side, or I can go up and down. So I'm going to move the camera like that. And then last but not least, when you have just one arrow on the top and one on the bottom, that's zoom in, zoom out. I'm zooming out, and I scroll up to zoom in. That's what those tools do. So I'm going to change my angle a little bit to about here. I want to zoom out, so I'm pressing the C key to do this. And I want to move my camera up a little bit, so I want this tool. This is where I want to be for this lesson. I'm going to move this over here. And this one I'm going to move to about there. Now to animate this parallax, I'm not going to be animating the shape layers. I'm going to go camera, transform, position. I want to animate on the Z axis. So let's see which way I want to be going in. So I went off to the right for that. So I'm just going to go three seconds and move the camera to where I want it to be, like that. We're moving into the shapes and past them. So you can see how the parallax effect, the shapes change their distance in relation to one another as we're moving through three-dimensional space. Now we're going to start covering blending modes for the next tutorial.